the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. It's the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. It's an opportunity that I would um, really, really live to appreciate um, to be able to bring the word of the Lord to this great assembly, this great ministry. I'd like to start tonight by celebrating our father, a great man of God, Dr. Joda. Thank you so, so much for granting this opportunity and this privilege and, and also your wife and the entire leadership of this great ministry. Let the name of the Lord be praised. It's my honor to <clears throat> bless our hearts even at this conference and i really pray from the depth of my heart that the word will come with power it will come with illumination in the name of jesus christ let's pray father thank you so much for the opportunity that you have provided to minister at this conference thank you so much for your servant thank you so much for this great ministry i pray in the name of jesus that your word will come with life, it will come with power. I pray that our eyes will be opened and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the grace to walk in the truth that we will receive tonight, let it be released upon us. We give you the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We're going to be studying scripture and then we'll pray. I believe that the times that we live in <clears throat> demand a very thorough understanding of the word uh, i believe with all my heart that we live in very challenging times and the need for a thorough understanding of the word of god is is a need that cannot be overemphasized um, we we must come into a level of spiritual accuracy where we are not guessing and hoping around the things of the spirit, but that we are able to walk circumspect. The Bible says that every time we see that the days are evil, we are mandated to walk in wisdom. He says to walk as wise and not as unwise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Praise the Lord. Now, I'll be teaching along the theme, exploring the 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 teachings around the grace of God. Uh, if you will title this and you're following and writing, you want to write this by grace through faith. By grace, comma, through faith. That will be um, the title of my teaching. We'll call this session part one in the name of Jesus Christ. The subject of the grace of God has been one that um, has not really been properly understood in the body of Christ. There's been all kinds of um, variations and ideas as to what, what the grace of God really is and, and what is the scope of its impact and its applicability in the life of a believer. So we have all kinds of, there's been an age-long uh, controversy as to what the grace of God is and and the jurisdiction of balance and so on and so forth and then the most important thing is to know how to apply the revelation of the grace of god so i trust that god will grant us grace to really understand this topic in the name of jesus christ amen and amen ephesians chapter 2 from where we got the theme ephesians chapter 2 I want to encourage all the members of, of, of um, the Christ Chapel International churches, please pay attention, listen with all your heart, and let this truth bless you in the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, we'll begin our reading from verse 7. 
Ephesians 2 and verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. Verse 8, for by grace are ye saved. Now he's talking of salvation. By grace are ye saved. Through faith, it says, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We we'll read verse 9, the last verse. It says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is very, very important. The Bible now tells us that believers are saved by grace. That any kind of salvation you see happen to a believer, new birth being the chiefest of them, but any kind of salvation, deliverance, whatever it is that culminates to salvation, the Bible tells us that if it ever happens in the life of a believer at all, then it happened by grace. Let's look at a few more scriptures that talk about grace. Do not mind the enormous Bible reading is good for our spirits. And then I begin to build there. Second Corinthians. Let's look at Second Corinthians from verse Second uh, Corinthians 13, verse 14. Second Corinthians 13, 14. Apostle Paul is teaching now and he says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace that belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, he says, and the communion or the fellowship or the participation of the Holy Ghost, he says, be with you all. Amen. So the Bible says every time grace is mentioned, notice that Jesus is also mentioned. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next verse, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Apostle Paul is mentoring his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus or in Christ Jesus. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. There is the grace that is found in Christ Jesus. And it says a man can find strength in that grace. So that grace not only saves, the grace can empower. Take note of these readings. The Bible tells us that it is by grace that we are saved. So there is salvation through this grace. Now he's saying be strong in the grace. So there is the grace that empowers. Next verse, 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. Apostle Peter is teaching now, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. He said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. But grow in grace grow in grace that means there is provision for growth even in the grace of god this is very powerful grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ two more scriptures second corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 we're examining the scriptures that deal with the issue and the subject of grace now this was paul theologically speaking he was he was buffeted again and again and he went to the lord he besought the lord thrice and this was his response the lord's response to paul and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee so there is sufficiency in the grace of God. My grace is sufficient for you. Now he meets the Lord about infirmity. Remember, this is a context of weakness. This is a context of, of, of a bodily weakness, sickness and infirmity. And his response is that the answer to that weakness and the answer to that infirmity is also grace. So we are seeing that when it has to do with deliverance, it is grace. When it has to do with empowerment, it is grace that answers. When it now has to do with insufficiency and the limitations, it is still grace. 
my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength aha here it is again is made perfect in your weakness how is the strength made perfect through this grace my grace is sufficient for you the last scripture first peter chapter 5 and verse 10 Shalapos Kabrandiga Balatus. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. Apostle Peter says, But the God of all grace, the God of all grace. Now take note. This is where one of the few places in scripture where he now adds all to grace. But the God of all grace that immediately suggests that grace is dimensional. But the God of all grace, not just grace, all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, by that grace, the multifaceted dimensions of that grace, make you perfect, make you established, make you strengthened and settle you all by grace. That the grace of God can perfect a man the grace of God can establish a man. The grace of God can strengthen a man. And the grace of God can settle a man. All by grace. Very, very powerful. In fact, let's take one more scripture. Titus. Titus, I wrote it down here. Titus chapter 2. We'll read 11 and 12. Titus chapter 2. 11 and and 12 it says for the grace of god that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men so there is a grace that appears to all men all men teaching us that denying ungodly and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men what is the grace of God? Let's, let's, let's deal with this. What, what exactly is the grace of God? We talk a lot about the grace of God. And you know, in our world, when, when someone you know, wants to give the glory to God, they just say, look, it's, it's God's grace. And, and that is true. But what exactly is the grace of God? Because if we are dealing with the, the exceeding greatness of His grace, it is important for us to understand what the grace of God is. I wrote down two very powerful definitions here that I'd like us to consider. Number one, that the grace of God is a state of awareness, a state of consciousness. Listen very carefully. The grace of God is a state of awareness, a state of consciousness, a disposition of understanding of the limitless provisions and possibilities contained in God and access through the Christ. This is very, very important. So the grace of God, the first definition is that the grace of God um, represents an awareness, a consciousness. It is a disposition of understanding. So the grace of God has to do with a, a belief system. It has to do with a consciousness. A consciousness of all the limitless provisions and possibilities that are contained in God. Please understand this. Most times we limit grace to just salvation or we limit grace to just the unmerited access. That is wonderful, but that is a very limiting understanding of grace. That every time we talk about the grace of God, it encapsulates every provision, every possibility that is contained in God and accessed through Jesus Christ. So the consciousness, the awareness of that unlimited dimension of provision of possibilities in God is called grace. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Just to buttress on this definition, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Very, very powerful scripture. Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus and he says, Thanks be to God, you know, of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said he had blessed us with 
all blessings in in heavenly places all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ all spiritual blessings this is my definition of grace that every spiritual blessing that is found in god access through christ is called grace so faith is grace wisdom is grace power is grace anointing is grace speed is grace restoration is grace every dimension of possibility that is accessed through christ available to the believer is called grace it is not just limited to salvation or deliverance or even empowerment a consciousness so as a believer i am aware that this god that we serve and one who i have come to receive his life and surrender my life and my all to he's a limitless god and that there are infinite possibilities that are in god and that the gateway to access all these possibilities is the person christ there is no other name the bible says under heaven given to men by which we must be saved so it's very important there are spiritual blessings they are in heavenly places routed through the christ that is the first definition of grace it is a consciousness it is an awareness number two the second definition of the grace of god is an empowerment resulting from that knowledge the empowerment that results from that consciousness is called grace the empowerment that results from the consciousness that god is unlimited and that there are infinite possibilities that are contained in him that by believing that truth and having that consciousness there is an empowerment that is released that energizes the believer to walk and to live in keeping with the conditions that make those spiritual realities manifest so this is the second definition of grace it is an empowerment resulting from that knowledge that consciousness what consciousness the consciousness of the limitless provisions and possibilities that are in god through christ and that this empowerment energizes the believer to walk and to live in keeping with the conditions that will make those possibilities manifest now let, 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 let's understand what i'm trying to discuss here number one i'm talking about a consciousness a consciousness that there are spiritual blessings that are unlimited that reside in god access through christ then number two that having that consciousness has a spiritual implication that there is an empowerment that comes from that consciousness it is that empowerment that energizes the believer to walk in keeping with the conditions that will make those spiritual blessings manifest this is grace the consciousness and the empowerment from that consciousness the awareness the revelation the understanding of the limitless possibilities that are in god the spiritual blessings that are in god in heavenly places routed through the office of jesus christ and the empowerment that comes from that understanding is what the bible calls the grace of god very very important very quickly i wrote something down here i said the highest revelation the highest revelation of the grace of god or grace is the awareness of what we have come to understand in the body of christ as the finished work of christ the highest revelation of grace the highest revelation of grace is the awareness the consciousness of what we call the finished work of christ what is the finished work of christ the spiritual blessings that have been made available to the saints on account of the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus christ 
the spiritual blessings that have been made available the spiritual blessings that have been made available deliverance from sin and death and hell and condemnation is only one of the many spiritual blessings that come to the believer abundant life the wisdom it says worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us and then it begins to list seven dimensions wisdom power worthy is the lamb that was slain so he was slain and he purchased unto us all of these spiritual blessings worthy is the lamb that was slain he was not just slain but he received from where from satan who until that time had been the god of this world the keys of dominion given to him worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us riches worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us wisdom to receive for us strength to receive for us honor to receive for us glory and to receive for us blessing you find that in revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. this was the worship of the elders in heaven worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us the saints power riches wisdom strength honor glory blessing the finished work of christ a revelation of the spiritual blessings that have been made available to the saints only exclusively on account of the death the burial the resurrection of jesus christ what we call theologically speaking the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ this is very very important now the highest revelation of grace i wrote here is an awareness of the finished work of christ alongside the advantage it has provided for the believer today it is not only an awareness of the finished work of Christ, but an awareness of the advantage that on account of this finished work, the believer is not disadvantaged. That on account of the finished work of Christ, there is a dimension of advantage that we enjoy. That it was not for nothing Jesus Christ died. Now, please, you have to understand this because we live in a world now that continues to fight spirituality. We live in a world that continues to demean the faith life as though it is just a religion like every other religion. But our faith work is a work of power. Our faith work is a work that is, 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 is that has, has everything supernatural. From the entrance of the kingdom to living the kingdom life to the final, it is everything power. There is an advantage that the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus has provided to me and to you. There is an advantage. Please bury this in your consciousness. There is an advantage. I am not just disadvantaged. Jesus died and brought me in a position of advantage. And we're going to be exploring some of these things. But it is, it, is, it is enough for you to know that there is an advantage. That the blood of Jesus was not shed for nothing. That his death was not just a historic occurrence. But that there are spiritual implications to these things that culminate into an advantage here and now. An advantage that provides power. An advantage that provides riches an advantage that provides wisdom an advantage that provides strength an advantage that provides honor an advantage that provides glory an advantage that provides blessings and ultimately an advantage that secures the eternal destiny of the saint this is the grace of God so let me do a very quick recap that I began to tell us that the grace of God has to do first and foremost with a consciousness please listen a consciousness an awareness a disposition of understanding about the limitless the greatness of our god and the vast possibilities the bible calls it riches the riches of his grace the extent of the supernatural possibilities that are in god now through Christ made available to the saints. This is very important. And I did say that the grace of God is also 
the empowerment that comes from that consciousness now you see the thing with 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 god and this is how this is how god works every time you believe a report every time you believe a truth every time you believe a spiritual information every time you believe a revelation there is always a power dimension there is always an empowerment that backs every revelation in the kingdom many of you have listened to uh, my teachings and i've shared there a, a vision that i had many years ago where i saw a great door a very giant door and um, i saw that door had many smaller doors attached to it and scriptures were written on every door and it was opening and closing opening and closing and the lord let me know that all these doors are doors of revelation and that every time you walk in the consciousness of any kingdom truth the grace dimension the empowerment to demonstrate and validate that truth also backs it that means that any truth that you do not have the grace to defend is not yet a reality in your life the consciousness and the empowerment the consciousness and the energizing this is very important write this down and please listen carefully the grace of god provides access underline the word access if you're writing the grace of god provides access to the provisions of god the grace of god provides access to the provisions of god the grace of god provides access to the provisions of god but does not automatically make them manifest in your life take note of this the grace of god provides access to the provisions of god let me repeat it slowly the grace of god provides access to the provisions of god but does not automatically make them manifest on earth or in your life herein lies the confusion of many believers as to the theology of grace that the grace of god is responsible for providing access not for making it manifest automatically no by grace through faith by grace through faith when the bible says it is the gift of god and it is not of works he talks about the saving grace and then he talks about the the contribution of man in saving himself and so the bible says man did not contribute in saving himself he only contributed in receiving and making that which was true in christ to become manifest and this has always been the character of grace as many as have received him even to them that believed on his name he gave them power to become he gave them power to become as at the time they received they did not have the power yet it was when they received he gave them power to become so it starts with receiving then between receiving and becoming power is what interfaces it please understand you receive you are empowered then you become you receive you are empowered then you become if look if you understand these people of god your life will be a wonder to you and if you do not understand this you will be frustrated over a subject that looks so simple but controls the tragedy and the pain and the limitation of many people you receive you are empowered you become you receive you are empowered what do you receive an information a body of truth a consciousness that consciousness comes with it the empowerment the empowerment strengthen you to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for actualization then you become so let me repeat myself one more time i i, I pray that we're understanding what i'm teaching the grace of god provides access underline the word access access means potential 
Access means a possibility that can be yours under certain conditions. When you have access to your money, it may not necessarily be in your hand, but you have the ATM and you have the code, the ATM card, you have the code, and you can go and under a certain condition, the physical cash, the dollar, the pound, the euro, and, and, and the naira, whatever currency you use can come to you. Right? So I can receive, for instance, um, a hundred thousand pounds or a hundred thousand dollars into my account it has been given to me so i have access to it but having access does not necessarily mean that i am holding it physically access to it means that the hindrances have been taken away but then the bank that facilitated that transfer must educate me on how to withdraw that money from my account into my hand remember the ultimate destination is for it to get into my hand not just to remain in my account my account is a is a system of hope it gives me hope but it should not just stop at hope i should be able to handle it blessed be the name of the lord so the grace of god provides access to the provisions of god but it does not automatically make them manifest on earth or in your life. John chapter 1 and verse 14. Let's have a scriptural backing for that, 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 that point. The Bible says, and the word was made flesh. Now watch this. Whether it was made flesh or not, it was still the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. So becoming flesh was not what made it the word it was all powerful from the realm of the spirit but it could not profit us understand this the word could not profit us just being the word in the heavenlies there had to be a system to make the word to become flesh and dealt to dwell among us and the bible says and we beheld his glory the glory as of the begotten of the father full of grace when was it full of grace when it dwelt among us full of grace and truth the word was made flesh manifest now this is where this whole subject concerns us we thank god for the grace of god the limitless possibilities and provisions that are in god through christ but the saints need to access these possibilities to walk in victory remember we need to walk in victory if it is true that jesus christ died rose again if it is true that he said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me if it is true that man is the zenith and the apex of his creation then there has to be a demonstration of that dominion that power that kingdom in fact when jesus was teaching to pray he said for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory and he's handed it over to man i give you power i give you authority but that authority cannot work in my life and your life until we understand this. The grace of God gives access to the provisions of God, but it does not automatically make them manifest. Access, access, access. That is the assignment of the grace of God to grant you access to the riches of God in Christ. But it takes another agency that is responsible for its manifestation here and now. Write this down. Why do we need a manifestation of the grace of God in our lives? Not just the awareness, not just access. Why do we need to move past access to manifestation? Number one, three reasons. The first reason why we need to move past just access to the grace of God, to its manifestation is that it is in the manifestation of grace that the love of the Father is revealed. It is in the manifestation of grace that the love of the Father is revealed to both mankind and creation. That means that if the grace of God is not made manifest among us, it will be difficult for man and creation to see and comprehend the extent of the love of God. Why do we need a manifestation of the grace of God in our lives and in our world here and now? Number one, 
it reveals the love of the Father. If it is true that God is love, if it is true that he cares for me, if it is true that God wants restoration, if it is true that he defeated Satan, if it is true that he is king of kings and lord of lords, then there has to be a way that that spiritual truth is translated into our lives. When we see it, then we are able to give him glory. Then creation can say truly of a truth, the love of God has been made manifest to creation. That is why Jesus did not just die as the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. That is why Jesus didn't die in heaven. He had to come and act out that death on earth because this was where we, need, we needed to see him. He became a man. He did not die in the secret. He did not die in a room. He died openly. Why? For us to see. We needed to see the love of the Father on display. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Let's look at three scriptures very quickly. That buttress on the fact that it is in the manifestation. Every time there is a manifestation of the love of the Father, it is always, um, it brings glory to God. It, it, it reveals his love. There, there cannot be an awareness of the love of God without it being manifest in our realm. For God so loved the world, popular scripture that he gave his only now not his only now his first begotten now because we have become the begotten also that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so he loved the world he proved that he loved the world not just by making a pronunciation he had to send jesus down to the earth to act out his love in a painful death John 10 and verse 10, Jesus is teaching here. And here's what he says. He says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. To kill, to steal, to kill and to destroy. He says, I am come that they might have life. The word there is the way. And they might have, and that they might have it more abundantly. So he's saying, This is, I came to give man abundant life as an expression of my love. So if that expression, if that abundant life is not at work practically in my life today, it begins to compel me to doubt the reality of the love of God. In his earth walk, when Jesus walked upon the earth, Every miracle that he performed, every mighty manifestation from the feeding of the 5,000, from the, the multiplying of, of, you know, of bread, from the turning of water to wine, raising the dead, healing the sick, you know, multiplying fish, all of the miracles that he did. Every time he did them, he let them know that these were tokens, they were expressions of the love of a father they could not see who had sent him as a representation of the love of the father so it is important that the grace of god is made manifest so that we can behold practically the love of the father through jesus christ john 8 and 32 the last verse john 8 and verse 32 for this this point john 8 and verse 32 john 8 are we there 31 okay let's look at 31 and then 32 then said jesus to those jews which believed in him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed let's go to 32 it says and you shall know the truth as a person not just an idea and the truth shall make you free as a revelation of the love of God, that when you are free, liberty, that liberty, liberty, remember it is always grace and truth, and that this grace and truth can set you free. It can bring you liberty, complete liberty. So if my life remains in bondage, if my life and my family and my territory remains in bondage, it begins to question the validity of the love of God for me and towards me. This is very powerful. The second reason why we need a manifestation of the grace of God in our lives, not just an awareness of it, not just access to it, but we need it visibly manifest here and now, is that 
it is in the manifestation of the grace of God that believers have what the Bible calls the fullness of joy. The fullness of joy. Please write that down. The fullness of joy. John 16 and verse 24. Now, understand this. We do not need physical manifestations to have joy. We can have joy even in the midst of pain. We can have joy even in the midst of chaos. But we cannot have the fullness of joy until there is reception. The Bible says, He that told, have ye asked nothing in my name? He said, ask and ye shall receive that your joy that you already have may be full. So even before that miracle, you already have joy. But your joy is not full. And that does not culminate into abundant life. He wants our joy to be full. Acts chapter 8 from verse 4. Acts chapter 8 from verse 4. Very powerful scripture. The Bible says, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Verse 5. This was Philip in Samaria. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Uh -huh. Six. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake. Now look very carefully. Hearing and seeing the miracles. Not just perceiving. Uh -uh. The reality of that grace that saves came down to their level to the point where they could hear and they could see the miracles which he did. And as a result, verse 7, it says for unclean spirits. This is what they had and this is what they saw. The grace of God, access to the power of God, but not just remaining as access, being manifest now. They could hear it, they could see it. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies that were lamed, were healed. Hallelujah. Verse 8. This was the result of all of that. And there was great joy, not just in their lives. And there was great joy in that city. The fullness of joy. Now, this is not my message, but I just think I should, I should digress for a minute and show us from the word of God at least four areas of joy in a believer's life number one is called the joy of salvation the, there is there is a dimension of joy that comes when you receive jesus christ the joy of salvation number two the joy of walking in purpose the joy of walking in your divine assignment. There is a dimension of joy that comes to the believer when you find your place in life. When you find your destiny in Christ, your divine assignment, and you are walking in it. Number three, the joy of knowing that you are helping and transforming lives. There is the joy that comes to you when you know that for as long as you are alive and breathing, you are seeing that your life is helping people, you are making an, a difference, you are making impact, you are helping people know Jesus, you are helping humanity, you are helping your society to become a better place. There is a joy that comes. And then number four, there is the joy that comes, I call it the joy of producing results by the word. There is a dimension of joy in your heart when you walk the principles of the kingdom and they produce for you. Now, there are many other dimensions of joy, but I just thought to just pick four. Number one, again, very quickly, is the joy of salvation. If you are saved and that joy is not in your heart, it was not true salvation. It's called good news. Joy. Number two, there is the joy that comes when you discover and are walking in purpose, your divine assignment. Today we are celebrating the opportunity to bless this whole assembly because a man answered that call. And for many years, he, uh, he, he has, has gone on this journey of faith through the thick and thin, loving Jesus and inspiring so many. Many ministries have been birthed from Dr. Jordan's apostleship. 
And today we celebrate what he is doing because he found his place in life and destiny. Many have found their place. So there is the joy of knowing that you are walking in purpose. Number three, there is the joy of knowing that you are transforming lives. It is a very terrible thing to live your life breathing air and, and just eating and your life is not counting. As far as kingdom come is concerned and as far as the transformation of lives and territories and nations are concerned. Maybe this is a word for someone just listening to me. It's time to sit down and ask the Lord, what is my life about? What is my role and my contribution to this agenda called kingdom come? I'm tired of, of gallivanting left and right the shores of this earth. I want to find my place. I want to find the joy that comes in knowing that your life is is transforming others your life is making a notable impact and then finally the joy of producing results by the word let me tell you this i do not know anybody who has engaged the word and who continues to engage the word productively and it produces for him consistently who does not have joy it is not only the results the joy of knowing the joy of mastery, the joy of understanding the ways of God, knowing that you can transport spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit and make them manifest here and now is joy unspeakable and even full of glory. I can take restoration from the realm of the spirit and translate it into a reality. I can take wealth from the realm of the spirit and translate it into a reality. I can take the anointing of the Holy Ghost from the realm of the spirit and translate it into a grace that speaks here and now. Powerful, powerful. The joy that comes from engaging the word and transporting spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit, making them manifest here and now back to our discussion so this is the second reason why we need the manifestation of the grace of god fullness of joy joy is a big deal to the believer the bible ties many aspects of the believer's victory to joy ask that you will receive that your joy may be complete Number three, why do we need a manifestation of the grace of God in our lives? Not just an awareness, not just a consciousness, but that it needs to be translated to our lives here and now. It is the way the Father and the Son receive glory. The Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, are glorified when the grace of God is made manifest in our world in our lives here and now matthew chapter 5 and verse 16 jesus is teaching in what we call the beatitudes matthew 5 and verse 16 it says permit your light let your light so shine before men you see that now not in the realm of the spirit let your light so shine before men that they may see here you go again that they may see your good works so it is light in the realm of the spirit. But then when it comes to this realm, it is translated and converted to good works. It says, and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So our good works, the results that come out of our believing that if we truly claim that there are multifaceted possibilities in the Christ and we sustain the technology to convert them into dimensions that are relatable here in our world, the Bible says the Father is glorified, the Son is glorified. John 15 and verse 8. Jesus is still teaching. John 15 and verse 8. Shibas kabaru sapasiata. Herein is my father glorified. That means this is how my father takes glory. That ye bear much fruit. Not small fruit. Not little fruit. Herein is my father glorified. That ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. In my bearing much fruit. The father is glorified. In my bearing much fruit, the Father is glorified. That means if I do not bear fruits, I rob God of an opportunity to be glorified here on earth. Galatians 1 and verse 24, popular scripture. It says, and they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. Galatians 1 and verse 24, and they glorified God in me. 
and they glorified God in me that because of the manifestation of the grace of God that is at work in your life in such a dimension and proportion that dumbfounds principalities and powers that defies the wisdom of men people can look at your life as an epistle you become a sign and a living wonder very very powerful so watch this the grace of God provides access but that is only one step having access to the grace of God does not necessarily mean that you have enjoyed the benefit of that grace it means you can enjoy the provisions having access to the grace of God means that I can enjoy the life of God I can enjoy divine health for instance I can enjoy prosperity I can enjoy a life of victory I can enjoy dominion over principalities and powers I can enjoy longevity I can enjoy all of the possibilities that are in the Christ as revealed through scripture now let me say this here's my Bible here the Bible represents the boundary of of God's commitment to the believer God is not committed God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions allowed from Scripture now it does not mean God is that limited it means that he has covenanted that this is the jurisdiction of his participation in a believers life that means whatever Scripture does not allow whatever the grace of God has revealed in scripture does not allow God will not do it even if he can do it please understand this so we study scripture among other reasons so that we can understand the jurisdiction the boundary of God's commitment in and to our lives that is why it is dangerous to not be a student of scripture you will you will you will communicate spirituality and your Christianity simply based on superstition there are things other gods may do and other idols may do that God does not do. Why? Not because he's less powerful, but because he has limited his operation to the provisions allocated from scripture. So the Bible is the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. Every dimension of grace I want to access, I search the scripture by the spirit of revelation and then I find patterns that connect to various dimensions of grace. Let me say this as we prepare to pray. Write this down. Number one, the grace of God is not just limited to salvation like new birth. The grace of God is multidimensional. It's one of the most powerful revelations in my teaching you would be hearing. Multidimensional. Grace like wisdom, grace like love has dimensions. To limit the grace of God to just the dimension that saves men from sin is insulting the might, the potency and the greatness of God salvation from sin is very important that is the doorway to the life of God but that is not the only possibility that the grace of God can provide there is saving grace there is healing grace there is lifting grace there is grace that translates to the anointing empowerment supernatural empowerment to operate in God's dimension God's frequency of results limiting yourself to just the grace that saves when you are now saved it makes it look like you do not need that grace again we are saved by grace we live only on the strength of God's grace let me wrap up this session by attempting to now reconcile the factions as far as the grace teaching is concerned here is what i believe has been the age-long controversy between believers ministries and i'm sent to the body of christ and i love the body of christ and so i speak as one who is part of this great body and it boils down i believe to imbalances the first imbalance that i would want to by the grace of god solve is it comes from the very the the 
incomplete awareness or consciousness of the full scope of the understanding of God's grace or his methodologies in general. Now, every time God has had to operate in the earth, it has always been God and man in partnership. Please, please, you need to get this. You need to get this. The next session I'm going to be teaching on the other aspects. But then, please understand that anything that has to do with the earth realm, man is not absent and man is not isolated. To the point that when Jesus Christ needed to die, he became a man. He did not die as a spirit being. Today, he has ascended to heaven as a man. Do you know why? So that he can come back to the earth. If he went just as a spirit, he would need to become a man again to come back to the earth. This is very important. The man, Jesus, seated at the right hand of the, of the father and the angel said he will return back in the same way he left. This is very powerful. Without a body, you are not authorized to function in this domain of God's kingdom. It's called the law of territory. And so it is important for you to understand that when it has to do with any kind of operation on earth, there is a participatory role that man plays. The cheapest of them is our salvation. And even that, we don't just receive generically. There is a place of accepting that that report is true then communicating our need for God either by walking to a stage if it's in a church you are called or at least by declaring breaking down going down on your knees those those actions are not adding to salvation they are the participatory roles that we play in receiving that which Christ has done so the first mistake or the first error is the teaching that believers do not do anything else the moment there is a consciousness of God's grace, they only believe and receive. It depends on what is being said. If that receive means just to speak and verbalize, then I think there may be a problem there. It takes more than that. There are actions that are required to fulfill certain conditions that allow certain dimensions of God's grace to find expression. Now notice, the Bible says that the grace of God that brings salvation, that is the one that has appeared to all men. It is not every dimension of grace that has appeared to all men. It is the grace that brings salvation that appears all to all men. The, there are graces that provide certain other advantages. They don't just appear at random. You pursue them by satisfying the conditions that have been made to receive them. Otherwise, everybody will be equally anointed. Otherwise, everybody will be equally used by God. Our results should not change if it is the same grace that is at work in everybody. Please do not miss tomorrow's session because it will, it will add life to what I'm just sharing now. So anyway, back to our discussion. We have a dimension of this understanding. And so it has, in a way, um, um, and, and with all honor to the body of Christ, it has produced quite a Christianity of irresponsibility where many people hand over any and all aspects of their lives to Jesus Christ. They just feel that if God wants to bless me, I've been blessed. If God wants to lift me, I've been lifted. If God wants to heal me, I've been healed. So I don't need to do anything. And their lives continue to go down again and again. And their lives become a reproach that does not give God glory. And then on the other hand, we have those who continue to act as though it is their action that fabricates grace from somewhere. They do not act from the awareness that the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ is finished. And what they are doing is they are participating to make it manifest. Not necessarily to make it happen. It has happened in Christ. Our concern right now in the kingdom is the manifestation of that which is finished. So the, my prosperity today happens because I am already blessed, for instance. My prosperity is the mechanism that gives evidence to the blessing. My healing does not suddenly um, make healing new in the realm of the spirit. It's been there. But when it is made manifest, I have transported that reality from the realm where it is finished to the realm where it is needed right now. This is very powerful. 
we are not just supposed to take action until that consciousness is crystallized when believers start taking actions and their actions is based on an effort to make things happen outside of the assistance of christ that is what the bible calls works the bible does not call action works the bible calls action that is not based on the consciousness of the grace of god so please take note the grace of god does not stop action let me repeat this the grace of god does not stop actions believers have responsibilities Re believers have conditions that the bible mandates that we meet to release and manifest certain dimensions of the grace of god but that that action is secondary the first the first assignment is to bury in our consciousness the awareness of what grace is and the reality of the finished work of christ so when you pray for a believer from the standpoint of the finished work of christ when you minister to a possessed person or a, a demonic person or a, a, whatever kind of uh, um, issue that needs deliverance it is not the effort of the laying on of hands and the speaking that suddenly makes god move no you are tapping into a realm where that possibility has been finished what you are merely doing is engaging the principles that translate those realities and make them become true here and now are we together now so this is very important please make sure you stay with me as we take the next session because this is very very important by grace through faith by grace through faith as many as received him they received him then they encountered power they received him and they encountered power how did they receive him through the information that they heard called the gospel of salvation and then they were empowered to become they were now manifestations of those things that they received this is very powerful this is very very powerful and believers must come into that that consciousness christ chapel international churches please hear me i I stand in partnership and in faith with every man of God who has ministered so far in this session and in this conference to challenge you that even though we are in very trying times, I want you to know that the word of God remains true. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. It will pass away, but his word remains true. His word abides forever because he upholds all things by the word of his power the grace of god the consciousness that we belong to a family that is limitless that my limitation and your limitation is not a reflection of god's limitation and we must upgrade our understanding through illumination are you seeing the reason why the teaching of the word is very powerful the teaching of scripture the teaching of the word is the spiritual mechanism by which the saints upgrade in their understanding they upgrade in their understanding ephesians chapter 1 when you begin to read from i think verse 16 down Paul was praying, speaking over the church in Ephesus. And he says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What is the content of the prayer? Verse 17. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Other versions say flooded with light. It says that ye may know. That is it. That ye may know. Paul wants to take away ignorance from our lives. And he says that ye may know. There are certain things that if we do not know, it will cost us. I am limited as a person without Christ. I am limited as just a sociological being coming from my background. But that when I come into Christ, there is a grace. A compendium of limitless possibilities God's own realm of reality is made accessible to me through the office of this personality called Jesus the Christ that means if I do not encounter Christ I have not accessed the authorized doorway listen carefully 
Christ is the doorway to God's grace. Christ, in fact, is the only authorized doorway. Notice, authorized is the key word here. There are other routes by which individuals try to peep into various dimensions of the grace of God. It will surprise you to know that divination and witchcraft and sorcery and all of these manifestations of darkness that take advantage of the sun, take advantage of the moon and the stars, all of these things, they are simply spiritual ways of attempting to tap into several dimensions of the grace of God. But it is not through the authorized channel. Jesus himself said, I am the door. If a visitor comes into your house, there are many ways he can enter your house. He can jump the fence and enter your house. He's inside. It is your house. He can follow through a window. He's in your house. He can follow through the canal, the gutter that leads outside. He's in your house. But none of those avenues are the authorized ways. There is a gate and there is a door. Only he who comes through the door is welcomed. Anybody who comes through another route, even though he's in the house, there is a security system designed to fight you. This is why there is no other name. Listen to me. When we advocate Jesus and we advocate an encounter with the Son of the living God, it is not religious fanatism to migrate people from any other religion or belief system into what we call Christianity. It is more than that. That Jesus, the Christ of God, is the only one who has been given the authorization to usher men into the life of God. Jesus, the Son of the living God. Jesus, the door. Jesus, the hope. Jesus, the manifestation of the Father's love. Jesus, the custodian of the grace of God. Jesus, the giver of every good thing. Let me pray for someone right now as we attempt to wrap up today's session. You are listening to me from any part of the world and from the church. And you are saying, Apostle listening to you i have seen that i've just been a christian or i've just been around the things of god but i've not truly encountered jesus christ the son of the living god not just as an initiation into a religion called christianity but a relationship the faith life access to the grace of god i want to pray with you and i want you to mean it from the depth of your heart this is no show. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You are about to experience a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Securing your eternal destiny and also guaranteeing your victory here and now. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe in Jesus and tonight I receive your life into my spirit I confess that you are Savior I confess that you are Lord you died for me you shed your blood for my sins you rose again on the third day and now you are seated in a position of victory I declare that I'm a child of God. I declare that from today, the grace to walk in victory, power to live above sin, above the flesh, above Satan, and above the grave, I receive it now. I declare that I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I bless and I congratulate you for making this noble decision. I want to encourage all of you who have made this decision. If you are around the church there, let me encourage the pastors or the elders or all those in the committees that uh, if, if you can have these people and just have a way of receiving their information to just follow them up. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all who are viewing this broadcast. First for this great family, the platform that... I'm ministering uh, through 
And then I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for all who are viewing from other regions. In the name that is above all names, may your grace speak over their lives. That from today we'll begin to walk in this consciousness that God is unlimited and that Christ has become that gateway, that doorway, that access into the unlimited possibilities that are contained in God. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will help us to walk in that consciousness and also to obtain the empowerment that comes by sustaining that mind of Christ. I bless everyone under the sound of my voice and I declare that everything that represents a challenge in your life in this conference, I agree with you. I lend my voice and my faith with that of Dr. Joda, your father and pastor. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are completely healed you are delivered you are transformed i speak breakthrough in the name of jesus and i speak particularly to as many of us who are yet to be serious with our work with god you're saying apostle i love god but here and there i'm just casual about my spiritual life i pray for a fresh hunger that the things of god will become an obsession for you you will love the word of god you will love the ministry of prayer you will love fellowship with the truth of god's word May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. Finally, let me encourage you, please join the next session and make sure that your heart is open to receive because I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be speaking over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.